Hello, how are you? Welcome to week 19 of our Books and Play series. This week we've got the book This Is A Ball, which clearly it's not a ball, yeah? So this one, um, I've related it loosely, so the activities to this book, in that we're going to look at attributes this week. So what makes a car a vehicle? What makes a shape a shape? What makes a 2D shape versus a 3D shape? Uh, what makes a reptile versus a mammal, as far as animals go, or an animal compared to a banana? So we're looking at the different attributes of different objects. We're also looking at colors and shapes. And I've got household items as well as garden and animals. So we've got a whole stack of different sorting activities. I'll just show you the book first. So we're going to agree whether, is this a triangle? Yes. Is this a cat? No. And then why is it not a cat? It's an ice cream. Yeah. Uh, what is this? We've got a banana. So this one. Yeah, let me put it that way. This is a ball. Clearly not a ball, yeah? So we've got a cube. So it's not even a square, it's a cube, a 3D shape. This is a dog. This is a bike. This is a blue bike. So we're bringing in colours and so on and so forth, yes? And it gets more and more complex and ridiculous as we go. It's a really cute book. Good one for having a good old argument with your kid, yeah? And trying to trick him too. This is not the end of the book which it kind of is. So let me show you. Now to start with, if you're doing this with a toddler, you've got, uh, so it's four pages of cutouts. I've made the lines pretty close, so it's not too hard as far as cutting it out. But there's 112 different objects here. Really good for having a decent amount to sort out. But if you're doing it with a toddler, I would pull all the 3D shapes. I would pull a good deal of the toys and household stuff and just keep it basic, yes? So let me show you, we've got all that there. Our first one is sorting it into colors. Now it's up to you if you want to, I probably shouldn't have mixed these up first. I'll chuck this into fast forward when I'm done talking. Um, I would probably just pull the color shapes and then sort them into colors. Sorry, the shapes that are colored. Um, if you want to sort out everything, go ahead. So we've got some clothing here that's green. We've got a brush that's a bluey green, let's stick it in blue. I've got an ant that's black. Uh, rainbow, so you could stick your own pile there if you wanted to. Rainbow colors as well. There's a gray, which there's no gray on here. I could put that down there. So you see, you can sort it into colors. Up to you whether you want to. Um, I would probably, depending on whether you're doing it with your kid um, or structured in the classroom, I probably wouldn't do all of these at once. Or you could do it in a small group with all of these in the middle and each child's working on something different. Um, but if you're doing it at home, I'd probably focus on one at a time, yeah? So we'll wipe these off. We've got the colors there. Now I've got my 2D shapes. So I would pull, so probably from four or five years upwards, I would have my all my shapes. Sorry, there we go. Oh, that's most of them. What's that? We've got a heart shape there too. So we can sort it first from 2D and 3D. So our 3Ds are our objects and our 2Ds are our flat shapes. All right, hang on, I'll fast forward this. All right, so we've got our 3D shapes. We can use them later. We've done our sorting. Now we've got our attributes here, so one side, that's going to be a circle or, or and an oval. Two sides, I think will only be our love heart in this case. If you have a crescent shape, a moon, that would be two sides as well. Let's do it while I'm talking. There we go. One side, two sides, I saw a heart here. Three sides would be our triangle. Four sides are our quadrilaterals, so squares, rectangles, parallelograms, and trapezium. Five sides, pentagon. Six sides is our hexagon. Hang on, hold up, did I do? That's an octagon. Eight sides. That's our septagon. I stuck in a nonagon, six sides, where's that? All right, there must be a hexagon in here somewhere. Ah, it is here. Diamond, four sides as well, so rhombus. Ah, anyway, never mind. It's in there somewhere, and I've got 10 sides. I stuck the star, um, but he doesn't have a spot, so we can just whack him down here. Then we'll move on to our 3D shapes. 
So we've got a sphere. Now I've given you little um, definitions at the bottom. They're basic definitions. It's really hard to describe a prism with two shapes on the end joined by these flat surfaces. Um, but you do have the descriptions to help you out there. So we've got the sphere, cube, cone. So a cone is a pyramid, a cube is a prism, but a cylinder is not a prism. Um, then we've got our pentagonal prism, uh, sorry, pentagonal prism, pentagonal pyramid and hexagonal pyramid. We've got our hexagonal prism, our triangular pyramid, triangular prism, pent, because we've got the five pentagram on top, pentagonal prism, uh, square base pyramid. There's my hexagon from the other activity and our rectangular prism. There we go. So we've sorted into the six different categories there. This one doesn't have any edges or corners. We can count the edges and corners here. You could then go on to um, get plasticine and little matchsticks and try and make the 3D shapes if you want to, just as an extension activity. All right, let me, we'll just use the shapes again for the colors. Hang on, I'll fast forward because you don't need me to talk through this. I was talking away then and forgot to press record. Um, so you can obviously sort out the colours, argue over the bluey green colours. I just put them in the middle there. Didn't have a pink, so I made up my own pile. You'll get the brown, black and white when you sort out these colours here. Uh, these objects, so you've got your, oh, there was a grey one, so we don't have a spot for him. But we've got the brown scorpion cupboard. There's a black ant here and a black spider and white. Uh, there's something white in here, surely. Cow, here's a little bit white. Um, you can also do this, so instead of the cutouts, you can use this sheet laminator or stick it in a display folder and then sort out your Lego blocks um, or your wooden blocks, something like, so that's just sitting on the desk, rocks. Um, anything you want, really, crayons if you want to, yeah? So you can use it for other things other than what I've given you right here. All right, let's move on to the next one. Hang on a sec. All right, for this one, we've got a whole stack of different animals. We're going to sort them into two legs, four legs, six legs, eight legs, lots of legs, and then no legs. So our no legs will be our sea creatures, so they'll have fins instead. Our six legs will be our insects, four legs will be our mammals. Yep, two legs will be our birds. Yep, and oh, some mammals as well. Uh, bat, for example, he has wings and two legs. So here's an exception to the rule. Eight legs will be our arachnids and crabs, I'm pretty sure. Then we've got our centipedes. They will be lots of legs, as will a caterpillar. Caterpillars mostly have 16 legs. Um, our no legs, also a snail. And I'm going to go to fast forward for the rest. Slater, they've got a ton of legs. Are they counted as a centipede or a millipede? Don't remember, not sure. Something to look up. Yeah? Okay, a few exceptions to the rule, and I made a mistake before, I said just mammals. We've also got amphibians, so the frog's got four legs. We've got reptiles, so the turtle and the lizard there with four legs as well. Our penguin, our, they're all birds other than the bat. This one, we've got our roach, fly, up earwig, I suppose that is. Now there's, a, oh no, he does have legs there. So there are a couple of tricky ones. See our dragonfly, the artwork doesn't actually show legs, but... He does belong there because he's an insect. Um, crustaceans, I'm pretty sure they're eight. They could go in lots of legs. Double check that one. And we've got our worm and our octopus. So they have tentacles, not legs. So I put him in the no legs section as well. Now, that's our sorting the legs. I'm going to wipe all that off because I still want our animals. And then this one, we're talking about where they live, whether it's in the sky trees, land, or sea. Um, some of them will be tricky. Uh, some birds will fly. Others, like the penguin, will not. They'll be on the land. Um, sorry, you can hear my voice singing in the background there. So let's just quickly do some sea creatures. Trees. I would put my spider. 
Where's he? Ah, he's in here somewhere. All right, I'll do this in fast forward so I'm not wasting your time. Hang on. All right, as you can see, most of these are land ones. There are some that you may want to argue about as far as, say, the Slater was living, I suppose, mostly under rocks. But if you've seen them under bark on the trees, you can put them up here. As long as you're discussing um, the reasoning why and what you've seen and what you've learnt. And then if you're not sure, Google it and look it up together. Um, don't think there's much more to add to that. Again, you're going to have bugs and insects on the ground. You've got a bat that's going to live in caves half the time or other than when it's feeding um so again that's up to you where you stick it just have those conversations yeah and then i've got the sea creatures there that's pretty straightforward crocodile um you do get your freshwater ones which aren't technically in the sea they're in the water but again just have those discussions yeah all right next one is so i haven't gone into as much detail in this pack as our classification animals pack um, which this will be interesting to see how this one works. We've got the animal coverings, so skin, scales, feathers, and fur. I didn't put shells on there, so we'll put our um, category, so like an exoskeleton. You wouldn't call it a shell for a spider, um, but spiders and crustaceans have their, arachnids and crustaceans have their exoskeletons, so they're, they're skeleton on the outside. All right, I will sort these out. Hang on a sec. All right, there's a few tricky ones in there. Um, I've called it fur, so you'd probably call it hair and fur because I've never touched a giraffe. Would you call it furry? Um, and elephants have skin, but with those big bushy bristle things. So if you want to put it in between, go ahead, just have that conversation, yes? Um, a bat has got very leathery skin wings, but it does have fur. What else was in there? Sheep's got wool. So there's different names for hair coverings. Pig is again like the elephant. It's got the skin and then those big bristly hairs. Now these ones, reptiles have scales. Our turtle also has a shell like a snail, but the snails are mollusk because it's got that foot, gooey foot thing. Um, yep, that'll do. Our stingrays and sharks are fish, so they have scales as well. Our worm. I, oh, sorry, you can't even see that. Worm. Um, I, would you call that skin? Um, and then would you call the snail foot skin? I don't know. Have that discussion, argument with your kid. Um, insects have the exoskeletons, as do the crabs. Whether you want to call that a shell or not in the crab, it's technically not a shell, I suppose. Um, so I've got the bugs and crustaceans there. But a caterpillar, that looks like skin. Sometimes they have hair. And is it still technically an exoskeleton? I'm not sure. Or is it like the worm where they have no skeleton? Don't know. Look it up. Again, argue with your kid. And, you know, as long as you're putting it in a category that you agree with or there's a reason for it, then go ahead. It's not to have a right and wrong answer, yes? It's to talk about the different attributes, the different coverings, features um, of the animals, everyday objects and shapes as well. Yeah? Okay. So the next one is not animals. So let's put our animals over here. So we've done, hang on, I'm gonna pause for a sec while I sort myself out. All right, I'm good. So this is our last one. We're not really using the animals, although I will pull out the cat and the dog. That's a cat, not a tiger. <laughs> um, what about a fish? We can put a fish as well. So they would be household pets. You could add the mouse and the roach too if you want to. Okay, we're not doing shapes for this one. So this one is looking at household objects, yeah? Which I haven't done anything like this before. I do want to eventually do a lookbook. Um, all right, so we've got bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, family room, garden, playroom. Now, again, not a right and wrong one because what's in my, I don't know, family room may not be in yours. Same with playroom. Well, we don't have playroom. My kids are older now. We've got a sensory area whatever um yep do this in fast forward hang on a sec all 
All right, there we go. We've got pets, so cat and dog in the family room, little living area, TV cabinet, TV and couch. In the garden, I had a few insects left in there that I hadn't separated for the other activity. Strawberries, trees, mushrooms, plants, more plants, ants, spider, scorpion, bushes. Hopefully they're outside, not in your house. We don't have a fish, so I was just gonna chuck him in the other pile. Um, you can do this based on what's in your house versus um, generally where you would sort things out to be. I've got dolls, blocks, balls, robots, toys. So I've got them in the playroom. They may be in the bedrooms in your house. Um, again, you can just chuck them over there. You don't have to have it in this section. You can relabel it if you want to. We've got kitchen stuff there in the kitchen. Uh, blankets, a dressing table thing, cupboard, alarm clock, clothes, beds, hat and shoes, which you may have a different spot in the house for your shoes and then bathroom stuff soap mirror comb some of that may be in your bedroom too again doesn't have to be right and wrong have those discussions where things belong and why now that is the end of this pack i hope you like it um i hope you can you know use the cards as well for other activities and extension activities too all right i'm going to leave it at that i will talk to you soon bye